Hello, beautiful people, and welcome. Hi. This video is going to be on a, a part of the live stream that was when they announced that as a reward for one of the events, you'll be able to select a four star from Liga that you want to get. Uh, and I want to talk about the four star options that we have for this and talk about which ones are good, which ones are a bit less good, and which ones can be valuable if you play those specific units. Main thing that you're going to want to be looking for is either A, you just get a character because you don't have them and you like them. If there's a character that you like and you want them, you don't need to watch this video, right? Like, you know you want them, don't listen. Other than that, though, if you either already have those characters or there's no character in, in particular that you really care about, we can talk about which characters are like good to have and which, which other constellations are also good to have. I guess I'll, I'll start by talking about all the ones that are already out and then I'll talk about Yao Yao. So when it comes to the ones that are already out, we've got like three pretty clear four stars that are significantly stronger than the rest. And those are Beidou, Singling, and Singto, with Singto being significantly above the other two. And then the other ones are kind of a little bit less appealing, with Yunzin potentially being appealing for some players that use specific carries. Personally, I already have C6 Singto on my account, but if I did not have C6 Singto on my account and I wanted to go for a unit that would make my account stronger, a Singto Constellation would basically be my first choice. Everyone already has Saint Ling, and it is very much worth saving your Star Glitter to buy Singto from the shop if you don't have him. So I'll be starting with the premise that you already have those two characters and if that's not the case then just get him so <laughs> but if you already have basically all of these characters, which ones of the, their constellations are good? Let's talk about Singto first. Singto C1 is his worst constellation by a pretty long shot. The rain swords that they talk about in his C1 isn't the consecutive sword rain attacks, right? And so it's not actually the burst getting one more sword, it's just the rain swords that you get around you when you use your E and when you use your burst being increased by one, which effectively gives you a little bit more healing when they expire. That, that's what it does. It's not completely useless, but it's definitely not like that great. His C2 is insane. His, his C2 is just a really, really strong constellation. It increases his damage by a significant amount. It increases his Hydro Applications duration by a significant amount, which is very, very nice because when you have a 15 second duration like Singto has without C2, so it's not just 33, 36 additional like damage or DPS that you get, or it would be something more like if you, if you start with VV, it's closer to like 25 to 30, but it's somewhere between 25 and 40 generally, but whatever. It's not just that increase in damage. It's also the increase in duration, which in a lot of teams means that you'll be able to either vaporize for a longer duration or you'll be able to hyper bloom more. You'll get more total seeds. It's just an insane constellation overall. I would argue that Singto's best constellation used to be his C6, like just best constellation in the vacuum. But with the release of Dendro and Hydro application over a long period of time gaining an importance, you can very much make the argument that his C his C2 is almost as good if not as good now but the longer duration is very very significant c3 right is his burst constellation his c3 is about a 15 percent dbs increase and that's all it does which is good but it's nothing like insanely necessary uh his c4 right it takes his e damage and it just multiplies it by 1.5 which is about a six percent dps increase which isn't that good however if you end up vaping his e if you end up using his e inside of venom burst the six percent can become closer to 10 20 maybe even 30 percent so it'll depend on your rotation so sometimes his c4 can be very good but at a baseline it doesn't do that much and then you've got a c5 which changes the motion value on his E, about a 3% increase, much like C4. At a baseline, does nothing as 90% of the time you EQ. Yeah, very often you're gonna use EQ instead of QE with Singto, just so that you can catch his own particles without having to wave. And then finally, you've got his C6, which increases the total amount of swords that you get and decreases your energy requirements. So without looking at the energy requirements, right? This is with 15 hits. With 15 hits, it would go from 36 to 50, which is about a 30%. You basically gain as much damage out of your C6 by itself from what you gain out of your C2 by itself. But instead of giving you better hydro application, it reduces your ER requirements. So in reality, it's actually more than this because you need less ER, which means you can build more attack, more crit, more whatever. As you can see, right? The difference in personal damage between C0 and C6 
it's more than double, which is a pretty big deal. But it's fine because and it's something that you can still expect people to get eventually because Singso's in the shop, which means that if you play for three years, you'll get him just from existing. You'll get his C6. Even if you don't get a single Singso from your banners, you can still get to C6 in like a year and a half, basically. But realistically, you're pretty likely to get two or three at some point just from the free mode gems you get from exploring. Point being though, when you have the option to get Singso, you should because he is that good and his constellations are that good. Even at C0, he's one of the best units in the game. In my opinion, he is the best unit in the game by far at C6. I used to consider Bennett to be better, but I think that Singso has gained so much from Dendro versus Bennett, who hasn't ne gained nearly as much. Bennett still has gained some in the sense that Dendro created a lot of teams that rely on Bennett less, which made it so that it's easier to get your Bennett free for your other team, which doesn't make him stronger, but it does matter and it's a nice thing for him. Anyways, point being, uh, if you're pulling for meta only, uh, Singto Constellations are really, really good to have. If you're talking about, if you're thinking about the long-term strength of your account, because Singto is a unit that you can get in the shop and some of the other Leah uh, four stars are not, then there can be an argument to be made to not get him and get a different unit instead because you can C6 him through the shop eventually, whereas you can't C6, for example, Yao Yao or Yin Zin through the shop eventually. But if you're if, if we're talking about like currently what is the thing that will make your account the strongest the fastest it's g generally going to be getting things constellations however there are some other constellations that are pretty big deals by themselves so let's talk about some of the other characters right we can talk about Tangling a little bit Tangling has a lot of constellations that don't do much you look at her c1 it reduces power resistance and you can actually get it somewhat reliably i think that her c1 got a lot of uh, a pretty bad reputation early on because Guoba often just doesn't hit the right enemy but the reality is if you care about 15% power resistance on an enemy, it's probably an enemy that's pretty tanky and there's probably not 83 of them in a chamber. Which means that you can actually get this pretty reliably. Because you basically are almost always, I guess with Raiden you don't, but you really almost always play her with Viridescent Venerer. It makes the resistance go from minus 30% to minus 45%. All right, which makes your damage multiplier go from 115 to 122, which is about 6.5% DPS increase. If you play her with Raiden instead, if you don't play her with VV, it's closer to a 14% DPS increase, which can end up actually being like a pretty significant deal. Her C2 is completely useless because you should never get to the last attack in a normal attack sequence. Even if you end up playing on field Tang Ling, her like full normal attack string is really, really bad. C3 is good. Basically, all of her damage comes from Pyronado, and this is sound levels on Pyronado. C4 is her best constellation by far. That 40% duration gets you basically 40% more hits. It's not exactly 40%, sometimes it's a bit less, sometimes it's a bit more, depending on like if you end up rotating around the enemies and shit like that. But it's by far her best constellation. And I'd say that if you are at C3, it's very much worth considering going for her just to get that C4. But her constellations after C4 are fucking garbage. So again, if you're thinking long-term strength of your account, you can get her from a banner or from the shop eventually. But if you get her on a banner later, it's gonna get you her useless C5 or C6, which don't really do anything for you. Because her C6 doesn't apply to her own Pyronado. As a general rule, Sandling's good constellations are C1, C3, and C4, with C4 being her best by far, and C3 being pretty good, C1 being kind of okay, and the rest being basically useless. Uh, then we've got Beto, which I'd say is like the third best four star on this banner. I think that overall, Beto is still very underrated by the community at large. Although I do think it's fair to say that she's not nearly as valuable as she was pre-Dendro. In the sense that before Dendro, the best two four star only teams you could make were generally going to be Reverse Melt Quick Swap with Bennett, Tanling, Rosaria, Kea, and Taser with Beto, Sucrose, Fischl, Singto. With the release of Dendro, Hyper Bloom is just such a strong reaction that you will generally want to use your Singto in a Hyper Bloom team, which leaves you with less options for Beto teams. If you end up playing Sucrose Taser still, it is still a very strong team. It is by no means a bad team. It's still really good. Beto can also work in aggravate teams, and she's actually pretty good with Sino because Sino doesn't have the best synergy with Fischl. It can be very hard to get good uptime on Oz with him unless you shorten your rotations, which kind of makes him feel like just a worse version, worse version of the thing. And, and I and I guess you can also play her with like on-field Sucrose Driver for aggravate. But I would argue that the best 
thing that came out of Dendro for Beto is double electro hyper bloom teams. When it comes to hyper bloom, right? If I do it like this, I get a seed and I get some quicken on the enemy, and I can use that quicken to generate a second seed. If, on the other hand, I don't do the the, the razor e, I don't apply electro. I only get one seed and then the ore is gone, right? Which means that having a constant source of Electro on the enemy lets you more reliably get more seeds. Now, the best Hyper Bloom triggers that we have, which generally will be Kuki and Raiden, don't actually have fast Electro application. They have fast Electro hits, but they have standard internal cooldown, which means that they generally apply Electro more or less once every three seconds. It's possible to use a second Electro unit to make sure that you get more consistent Electro uptime onto the enemies. The downside that can come from this is that if you use a second Electro unit, then you might end up with both of them sharing ownership from uh, for the for the Hyper Bloom. And if they share ownership, then you kind of want to build both of them with EM, which means that neither of them is really doing talent damage and you're not really gaining that much out of it. Now, Beto has a property with her burst where while her initial hit of her burst can hit the seeds, the bounces after the initial hit cannot. Which is bad if you want to play her as the Hyper Bloom trigger, because she just fucking won't trigger the Hyper Bloom. But it's very good if you play her with a second Electro unit, because it means you can build her with the normal attack damage crit build. But she helps your Electro application and helps you generate more seeds nonetheless. And another upside that you get is by maintaining a constant Electro aura on the enemy, well, you'll, you'll trigger more Electro charges, which is a bit more damage. But also, in one of the teams that I've personally been liking a lot, which is Ayato Hyper Bloom. Having that constant Electro application from Beto lets you trigger a lot of Electro Charge with Ayato, which while he won't have the ownership for the damage most of the time, he will get the reaction proc, which procs the Thundering Fury set, which reduces an equal down and effectively lets you get significantly tighter rotations with better Hydro off time. And because so much of Hyper Bloom is based on how fast your hydro application and how consistent your hydro application is, then that can be very valuable, especially for a unit that applies hydro in such a large AoE like Ayato, right? Which is something that he's arguably the best at. No other unit is as good at applying a lot of hydro in AoE as Ayato because his burst and his E both have pretty big range. Anyways, while Beto isn't quite as valuable for free-to-play players as she was pre-Dendro, she definitely still has some things she can be very good at. When it comes to Beto's damage, her most important constellation is her C2, which effectively just increases her damage by a significant amount in AoE. So Beto's burst hits the enemy, and then it bounces to another enemy, and it deals the damage again. And then it bounces again for a total of three times. With C2, it bounces to a total of five times instead, which is better if you're against more targets, but also if you're against two targets, it bounces back to the first target, which means that with uh, without C2, you get damage on first target, then second target, then first target for two instances of damage on your primary target. With C2, that would be three instances because it will bounce back to the other one and then again back to your main one. So you get two bounces instead of one on your second target and three instead of two on your first target. It also helps increase your elemental application because the way that the internal cooldown works for this is with standard ICD, which means that if you're in a two target scenario and you hit two times with your burst, right, on your primary target, it's gonna be two times, two times, two times, and the way that that's gonna apply Electro is gonna, you're gonna apply Electro on the first hit, then the bounce won't apply, then the second hit won't apply, but the bounce for it will. But then for the third hit, neither the first hit or the bounce will apply Electro. Whereas if you add a hit to that, you'll get an Electro app on the first bounce every time. So it, it helps increase her Electro application a little bit as well, uh, in AoE. Uh, she has other good constellations. Her C1 gives you a shield, which is actually pretty useful for uh, um, for survivability because she gets a lot of damage reduction and especially if you play her with Sing Cho, you get a lot of damage reduction so that shield ends up being a lot. Right? The way that damage reduction stacks is it stacks additively which means that if you get 30% from, from a character and then 30% from another and then 40% from a third character, you get 100% damage reduction and you don't take damage. So if you play Beto and Sing So together, you can get up to like 70 something, almost 80%
damage reduction, which reduces the, the damage you take by five, or if you look at it another way, which makes your effective HP five times higher. It makes you able to take five times more attack. Unfortunately, damage reduction doesn't apply to self damage from Bloom or Burgeon, but that generally doesn't happen uh, when you play high Bloom teams. Uh, all this to say, uh, her C1 isn't like a massive thing, but very often the shield does more work than you'd imagine. C3 is, is, is E level, sorry. C3 is not that good. C4 is just completely useless. C5 is decent. C6 is pretty good. Once you have Beto's C2, the rest of her constellations are far from necessary. But getting to her C2 can be pretty important. And then that leaves us with the other characters. We can talk about Yinzen a little bit because she's arguably the fourth best character out of the out of the ones we can get. Yinzen has basically one main issue, which is that her burst, right? It's a 60 cost burst. She doesn't generate a lot of particles, but most importantly, her, her damage buff is based on her own defense, which means that very often you'll find yourself in a situation where it's hard to get enough ER on her while still having a lot of defense. Most of the time people will use Fab Euphonious Lance, which on a character like Sing So, for example, getting a Fab isn't a downside because you want to build crit anyways, because that's how you get damage. But on Yun Zin, because her buff doesn't scale off of crit and that's most of the damage she contributes to the team is through her buff, then getting enough crit to proc five means you're getting less defense and or less energy retard. And because she doesn't have multi-hits, she needs a pretty decent amount of crit. Which means that unless you actually invest into her a lot with incredibly good artifacts, your Yunzen's buff will actually not be that strong because you'll often be forced to go two-piece emblem in order to just have enough energy recharge. Sometimes you'll have to go ER sense, stuff like that, right? You won't be able to go for a defense sense. Maybe you'll need a crit rate circlet so that you can even proc your fab at all. That being said, when you start getting to the investment threat, thresholds where you can still stay on defense main stats and on a good set for her while also having enough ER, then she can be a very, very strong buffer for normal attack based carries. Now the problem is, who the fuck is a normal attack based carry? You aim yeah? That's it? What about Wanderer? Charge attack. What about Ayato? The way that Yunzin's buff works, if you're hitting multiple targets, you're consuming more stacks, which means that if you're hitting a lot of targets, her damage goes down effectively. But also, and more importantly, a lot of Ayato's power budget in is in the fact that he applies a good amount of Hydro in AoE, which means that when you try to play him as a carry, very often it's not that great. And then on top of that, when you try to play him as a carry, he generally gains a lot more out of someone like Sing So than he does out of someone like Yunzen. Because his burst is actually good, which a lot of people just forget about Ayato. He actually has a good burst, but the amount of energy recharge he needs if he's the only Hydro unit on the team can actually be pretty high. So getting Sing So helps your ER requirements a lot. All that being said though, what the fuck? My Genshin crashed. I'm sorry, I won't shit talk Yunzin anymore. Anyways, Yunzin constellations actually help her a decent amount. C1 doesn't do anything because you don't use her E off cooldown. C2 is decent. Uh, C3 is fine as well, pretty decent. C4 is meh, okay, I guess. C5 is completely useless. And then C6 is nice on some characters, but it's not that big of a deal. Next up would be Yanfei. Yanfei is overall not a very good unit. Like, obviously she's functional. Any, any like, pyro carry can be functional because as long as her numbers aren't, like, actually completely, like, literally, like, 1%, because pyro teams have a very strong core with Bennett, Kaguha, Sing Cho, you can kind of just put any pyro carry in the last slot and it'll be functional. Compared to the other options, she's not very good, but it works, I guess. But, Yunfei actually has a constellation that gives her access to a new role. So her constellation four makes her burst give a shield equal to 45% of Yunfei's max health. That's actually a lot. If we look at a strong shielder, like Zhong Li, his shield is 20% of max health, plus a, some base shielding. But it, it, let's say you go like 45k HP on your Zhong Li, which is like pretty high investment. 20% of that is just like 9k. You get another like 2.5k. So yeah, it, this is like the equivalent of a 25% max HP shield, including the base absorption. It's like 25%, right? At talent level nine, it would be closer to like 27-ish. Obviously, it's a Geo Shield and only has some shield strength, but point being, 45% of your max health on a shield is a lot. It doesn't make Yanfei the best shielder in the game, and far from it. Her biggest issue is actually that it's on burst, not on skill, and her burst actually has a really high energy cost. 
But if you can manage to get the investment required to be able to get your burst back, her shield is actually fairly strong. If you need a shielder in a team that also needs a way to apply pyro for some vape, for some Veritas and Venomer setups, for example, in Hu Tao teams, Yanfei can be a very solid option for that. I'd say that none of her other constellations really are a big deal. Next up, Ningguang. Ningguang's not particularly good, but as a geo range unit, she can function against the most annoying enemy in the game, the Golden Wolf Lord, which means that at least she has some value, I guess. I generally wouldn't recommend her as a carry, but she's not like completely terrible. She can function. C1 doesn't really do much because the AoE on the normal attacks is actually kind of very small. C2 is a pretty good constellation. It increases her, her front loaded damage by a decent amount. Uh, C3 is okay. C4 sucks. C5 is okay. And C6 is pretty good. Next up, Chongyun. Chongyun is not a very good unit. His cryo infusion isn't really that valuable on anyone. His damage, if you like quadruple melt his burst, is okay, but it's nothing crazy. And it's generally not as good as the other cryo units. It's more front loaded than a unit like Rosaria, but it's less total damage, so that's that. His C2 can actually be useful. The cooldown reduction in some teams can be good. The rest of his constellations, right? They increase his personal damage, but his personal damage isn't that good to begin with. It doesn't increase it enough to make it like a particularly big deal. And then finally, for the characters that are uh, already currently out, we have Shenyan, who is pretty fucking bad. She's arguably the worst unit from Tevat, and I'm saying from Tevat because obviously there's a unit that's worse than her, but I don't think, I, I, we, we, we don't talk about that. Her biggest issue is that she doesn't really have anything that she's, any niche that she can be actually useful in, unlike a lot of the other bad units, right? You look at Amber, for example, yeah, Amber's pretty shit overall, but she's a bow user with uh, a low cost burst that applies a lot of pyro, so she can actually be useful for VB setups in a Hu Tao team, right? Because she can use Elegy if you have it. Wolf Gravestone isn't good enough of a buff to really justify using her anywhere. Uh, I know some people use her with Bennett for Pyro Resonance plus Wolf's Gravestone plus physical resistance reduction plus physical damage in a lot of one-shot teams, like a lot of one-shot setups, but that's not even like a team, that's just a screenshot, basically. Her biggest issue is that her damage over time from her shield, it's tied to you having the shield, which means if you lose the shield, you stop dealing damage over time. Which means that you can't even use her as a source of off-field pyro most of the time because your shield is kind of paper thin. I mean, the main teams that actually care about off-field pyro right now are either like Ganyu, I guess, who doesn't want to be melee range, and this forces you to be hugging the enemy, and Burgeon teams, which deal damage to yourself so you'll destroy your own shield incredibly quickly. You can use her as a way to do some setups. When you swap into a character, you get a self power application. So if I go Kazuha Senyan, I can use it to get a power infusion even without an enemy, but Bennett can do that too, and Bennett's actually good overall, so yeah. The most success that I've found with Shenyan has been in mono pyro teams with C6 Bennett building her full pyro, where she actually does deal a decent amount of damage. Her normal attacks are nothing crazy, but they're fine. And if you manage to keep her shield up, the damage over time ends up being a decent amount total. And her burst uh, damage over time also hits more, like more total times than you'd expect. So you can actually get a okay amount of damage as like an on-fielder for a mono pyro team, the same way you'd use Klee, for example. Overall, she's not great, but you can play her if you want, and if you do, generally I'd say mono pyro teams are the best way to do that. Which actually makes it so that what most people consider to be her best constellation, her C2, which guarantees a crit on your burst, doesn't actually help much, because it's only the physical damage portion of it, and if you're playing her in mono pyro with C6 Bennett, you're not building her physical damage, so it doesn't do that much. Other than that, honestly, none of her, none of her constellations are that good. And then finally, Yao Yao. We'll go through her kit really, really quickly. She's a dendro healer. Normal attacks are meaningless. Her E throws down a rabbit on the ground, and then the rabbit will shoot either at you or at the enemies. If you're low HP, it'll shoot at you. If, it, if you're not, it'll shoot at the enemies. If it's shooting at you, it heals. If it's shooting at the enemies, it deals damage. I mean, technically it does both, right? No matter what it shoots at. Like if you're standing on the enemy, it'll heal you and deal damage to them. Uh, her burst, she starts throwing throwing radishes uh, at the enemies, like herself on top of what her, what her skill does. But 
it shares internal cooldown with her E. Uh, the initial hit doesn't, and there's a constellation that also has separate ICD, but it's actually a time-based ICD that, that's shared between her Ascension passive and her E, which means that using your burst doesn't actually increase your gender application. Her burst doesn't last long enough to really justify it being valuable. It's only five seconds, so you can't really like stay on her and do a fun thing with like you running around and, and, and getting this passive a bunch. She's not gonna be unplayable, right? Because at the end of the day, she is still a Dendro healer. So if you are playing an aggravate team, which currently doesn't have good healer options, you can use her. And that's good. Her application though is pretty slow. She'll get five Dendro applications from her E, more or less. Then her burst initial cast can get her a sixth one. And then her C6, I think, gives you an additional two, which are fine. Like it's a total of eight applications, but it's not that much. However, when it comes to blue and AOE dendro application, enemies do not share internal cooldown between them, which means that if the rabbit is throwing at one enemy and then another enemy and then another enemy, you can actually apply dendro on each of those hits, which means that depending on how good or bad the AI targeting is, she could actually be a pretty solid option as a healer in, in Nilo teams. Outside of that, I don't see her being all that great. But nonetheless, like those are still two pretty important things, right? A Dendro healer for Nilo teams, although I would argue that her healing's probably not enough by itself, so you kind of still need to run Barbara or Kokomi. But still, more healing is, it makes it more comfortable. Uh, and I know that a lot of people are playing Kole uh, in their Nilo team with Nahida, just because you don't have to worry about the aura as much as when you're playing Triple Hydro. And if you're playing Kole, then I would say that there's no real reason not to replace her with Yao because Yao Yao also gives you more healing and you don't have to deal with Kole's garbage auto-targeting and birds just flying over the enemies and all that. So she could be a pretty solid unit for Elo teams. She could be a pretty good unit for Aggravate, like I've said, where she's a Dendro healer and the Dendro slot is the most replaceable when it comes to your Quiggin team. So replacing your DMC or your Nahida for Yao Yao shouldn't hurt your team too much. Uh, and you get a healer out of it and you don't have to lose your grouping. I like replacing Kazuha for Sayu and something like that. Uh, when it comes to getting her, if you get her from a Hytham's Banner and you want to build her and all that, there's not really much of a reason to go for any of her constellations. Her C1 can actually be pretty decent for a Dendro carry like a Hytham, and then her C6 helps a little bit for her Dendro application in like Nilo teams, I guess, and a little bit for her damage because it's Dendro application in Quicken teams, but nothing crazy. So all in all, she's the kind of unit that doesn't gain that much from Constellations, it would seem. So it's kind of fine to just get her C0 and stop there, which means that I wouldn't recommend getting her if you're planning on wishing for a Hytham, at least not before you wish for a Hytham because you might get some of her on the way. But yeah, that actually does it for for the uh for the four stars i think as like a closing statement i'll order the constellations from which ones i consider to be the most valuable for an average account to the least valuable and i'm not gonna use do all of them i'm just gonna do like the the main ones uh, and i will be including the first copy of a character because the first copy of a character is the thing you, you would have to get otherwise right so I'll, I'll include the c0 so the most important thing for an account is sing c0 and you already have tangling c0 from clearing or three of abyss or whatever for four of abyss i'd say that when it comes to like overall value after that the probably most valuable one is sing c2 then sing c6 then tangling c4 and after that it can kind of end up varying probably beto c0 beto c2 yao yao c0 because as much as i don't think she's that great overall she does fill a role that many people do want. These are probably the main ones. Anything other than these things is kind of just like, I mean, I guess I should also add the other constellations, right? So probably Singcho C3 here, then Changling C3, then Beto C0, and then Beto C2, Singcho C4. I think you can make an argument for Yao Yao C0, maybe even kind of more valuable than this, then Singcho C5, Changling C1. Beto C5 or C6, I guess, is better than her C5. This is like generally the order of, of how much like value you get directly on your account from getting a specific constellation. This is probably most to least out of the ones that I would generally recommend. Keep in mind that if you have C1 Beto, for example, but you have like C0 Singto, 
Just because Saint Toad C1 isn't here doesn't mean that you shouldn't go for it because C1 does get you closer to C2. And so at the end of the day, I can't make that decision for you. It's gonna depend on how, how patient you are, how much you're willing to get a constellation that doesn't do much for you in order to get you closer to the ones that do, stuff like that. And you could definitely make an argument for Yao Yao C0 being more important than Beto C0. I guess I should also put Yao Yao C1, I guess depending on what teams you end up wanting to play. But yeah, so that's it. That's what I got for you today. I appreciate you guys watching this. Yeah, don't forget to check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash zajeff77. Leave a like, subscribe, all that, all that jazz. And uh, yeah, bye YouTube.